All right, let's get to, ooh, wait, hold on. I was about to pop it. Let me see if we can. Let's get to Megan. <laughs> no McCorkle. They had some commercial on for something for no McCorkle. They just kept saying no McCorkle. Like what the heck? I don't want any no McCorkle. So we open with a commercial for something called Perpetual Pets, where we see this little girl. She has a dog. It dies, and then it's it's a robot now. Oh wait, no, this isn't uh replacing the dead pet. It's just a Furby. So now we got the little heifer, who's the star of the movie, playing with the Furby in the car while her parents is arguing about about screen time. Cause you know the little thing got to act. So they driving up some snowy mountain. He don't know how to put chains on the car and that it ain't four wheel drive. They clearly don't know what they are doing. This is why I stay in the cité. And of course there's a head on collision. A snow plow hits them. We fade out and cut back in. What city is this? This ain't New York. Man, yeah, probably Denver. No, it ain't Denver, maybe it's Denver. Mm. It ain't San Francisco. Maybe Portland. So now we're at the funky company that makes them Furbies. That's where uh, they cousin work, the girl aunt. So we got Brian Williams' daughter, and ooh, she look dead like him. Her and uh, this pretty black girl, they working on the Megan doll, and they trying to get it ready, but it ain't ready just yet. Oh, they putting the skin on her and testing out her eyes. But as they putting it on, the bosses come down and seem very upset. So he wants her to make cheaper stuff because that's what the competition is making and she out here blowing the budget. Child, she trying to show off Megan and she glitching. Oh God, her face done melted and blown up. So after that display, he tell her, child, work on some cheap crap for me, okay? But yep, she get a call from the hospital letting her know her people's dead and now she got a baby. So they get back to her house and the neighbor next door always letting her dog run up in the yard, scare the little heifer. So the little heifer gets ready for bed and she wants a good night's story. So Brian Williams' daughter is worrying about work, but her friend's like, look, you need to take care of your niece. So she get the little heifer a therapist. Lord, and this therapist picking up, they ain't really getting along, but they haven't been there for two days. The therapist tell her, look, Heffa, you gonna have to act like you love that kid a little bit more. It's a little cold in there. Might have to give it to the Peppy parents. So she tell the little Heffa, play with my iPad. I gotta work for a minute. I'll be back. We can go out to dinner after. I'll just be in the office down the hall. Cut to 9 p.m. She done forgotten to feed the Heffa. However, Brian Williams gets to show on the little half of the projects that she's working on and this old robot she built in college, which I bet is what they'll use to beat Megan. I bet. So she sees how much the little half of likes her college robot, and so she started building Megan again. So after a robot building montage and a good wig selection, we're at the office and we showing the big boss how the little half of interact with Megan. So she pair the little heifer with Megan so she'll recognize her. So the boss is excited about it. He wants to show it off to the other bosses and have the little heifer involved. So they got Megan telling Katie to wash her hands, reading her stories, you know, basically being like a big sister parent. Brian Williams' daughter's black friend is like, girl, you sure you want her to replace parenting? I mean, remember, this heifer ain't really want no kids. But now the doll starts asking why the... However, the doll interrupts their conversation and asks how Katie's parents died and asks how the little heifer's parents died and then looks it up herself. They rushing to try to turn the heifer... They trying to turn her off, but she won't do it. So then the heifer get interested in death. Brian Williams' daughter is trying to change the subject and tell her, look, don't even bring it up. And she finally gets her to turn off. So the next day, the little heifer playing with her bow and arrow. And one of the arrows goes where that dog is next door. It's Meg to the rescue. So Meg goes to get it. The dog attacks the doll. She calling for her auntie. Lord, and then she end up getting her arm bit. However, Megan's surveying the scene after the little heifer get bit. Later that night, Brian Williams' daughter calls the popo, and the popo like, look, you got to fix the hole in your fence. Ain't nothing we can do, boo-boo. 
So that night, Meg slip out and act like she's Celia, the dog's owner, and calls the dog out. Child, we see her grab the dog, and that's that. The next morning, we hear the actual Celia calling for Dewey. So now it's the day of the demonstration for the board. Let's hear it for the board. Let's see if they'll pay ya. Girl, they flipping out about that SVB bank out here. A lot of boards lost their coin. So the demonstration tray goes real well. The little heifer get to crying and Megan console her. There's not a dry eye in the house. All the invested people think, oh yeah, this is going to really work. They offer Brian Williams' daughter a raise. However, after the demonstration tray, they go out for hot dogs, and she tried to apologize to the little heifer, but the little heifer didn't bonded with Megan, so she ain't really trying to open up to her about her parents passing. With the therapist heifer, she asking the little heifer what her drawings mean. The little heifer starts crying, and Megan gets upset about it. Outside with Brian Williams' daughter, she's like, oh yeah, Megan's part of the family now. She's really helped Katie get over the loss. And the therapist is like, so you just pawned her off on an electric nanny. Child, I'm going to send her to the pappy parents. The therapist is like, this doll might not be good. She's looking at this doll as the mama and not you. And it's going to be too hard to untangle these emotional ties. An entanglement with Megan. How Jada. So that night, Brian Williams' daughter tells the little heifer she wants to send her to regular school for social skills. Child, people is assholes. That's all you need to know. So she's like, I ain't going without Megan, and you can't make me. And Brian Williams' daughter said, oh, yes, I can. So as her and Megan was getting into it with a little tussle, Megan said, let her go, and the lights flickered. Little heifer getting mouthy. So they end up leaving Jim at the toy table so they can go see this outdoorsy alternative school. I don't know why kids are so eager to I don't know why kids are so eager to learn outside. I don't need bird shit with my lesson. So of course the little heifer sneak off the beaten path and there's some bully kid that follows her and uh grabs one of them spiky little acorns and shoves it in her hand hard. Megan, of course, hears this and it's on. So the little bully boys steal Megan. But child, Megan tear his ear off. And she chased him. He fall down the road and get killed by a car. So don't nobody know Megan set him up. So they got to take the little boy away in a body bag. And the little heifer and Brian Williams' daughter head home to the police knocking on their door asking about the missing dog. So that night in bed. Katie asked Megan, did you push that boy into the road? The little heifer said, I ain't gonna let nothing hurt you. But yeah, I had to off him. Now she's singing bulletproof. Oh, she hear him in a shed whimpering. Oh, ah, uh -uh, it's Megan. She was pretending to be Dewey for that ass. Girl, she killing the neighbor lady. She done shot her hand with a nail gun, gonna pump her face with pesticide. Oh, Lord. So the next day, the popo knock on her door, Brian Williams' daughter door, and says, hey, your neighbor dead, and by the way, that kid, we found his ears, so we're looking at it as a homicide. So she decides, so Brian Williams' daughter decides, you know what, let me go through Megan's memories, see what she caught on camera. But of course, she done corrupted her files. But as she's looking for the video, her Elsie system asked her how she feel and does she want her end of day playlist. And she like, you don't ask me how I feel, heifer. Megan been hacking. So Megan starts to quiz her. That's something you want to ask me because your mouth real dry. So she tricked Megan into switching off because she's like, look at this pen. And then she push a little button. Wrap her up in bubble wrap and throw her in a box because she like, look, this heifer might be murderous. So she throw Megan in the car, grab the little heifer, and then they head to the lab. The little heifer crying, you can't put her in a trunk. Brian Williams' daughter like, look, she, she ain't, she ain't real. She ain't real. So she tell the little heifer she got to see the therapist, and they all get to the dang office. Little heifer in with the therapist. Brian Williams' daughter talking to her black friend, and her black friend's like, she ain't kill nobody. 
So now Auntie go in the therapy room and try to bond with the little heifer. The little heifer almost slash her with the scissors. Can she watch me? The auntie like, I don't know if you're going to get Megan back. You're going to have to go through the grieving process. Oh, Lord. So Brian Williams' daughter going to take the little heifer home. She called Tess to let her know to tell the boss, don't go through with the launch. However, Megan then hacked Tess's phone and answers for her and pretends to be her. So the black friends see that uh, she missed a call from Brian Williams' daughter and goes to look at Megan's code, and right when she sees intercept call, Megan shuts the system down, and her and the honk, and her and the other guy realize Megan's locked them out of the system. So they gotta manually unhook the heifer from the system. This fool gonna hit her with the dang pugil stick like that's gonna do something. She a machine. So right when he unhooks her, she comes to life and use one of them arms to choke him, Tess got to run over and use a hacksaw to cut it off. But then the heifer starts a gas leak in the room. Lord, but now she in the hallway doing the boop, 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 pop, puss, and flip, and flip, and... So she killed the boss and the assistant and then take the dang elevator down to the... Back at the heezy, Brian Williams started tries to turn on the light, but Elsie ain't working. I guess that's her Alexa. Girl, Megan in the house playing the piano. Brian Williams' daughter is like, Megan, what did you do? Megan said, you thought I was going to let you turn me off? So, child, her and Megan get to fighting. They trying to keep the daughter out the room. She throws some water on her. She gets to sizzling a little bit. So she finally get the little heifer with a weed whacker or something. Girl, how strong you make this dang dog? Because I'm sorry, it's just knocking you all over the floor at four feet tall. Heifer, please. But she ain't able to kill her with the weed whacker. So she say, look, I'm going to stab you with this pen. And I'm going to be part of the palliative care team so I can stay alive and stay with Katie. Girl, that ain't going to be how. Girl, that ain't going to work out. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. So the little heifer come into the garage where, you know, she about to get it. And she used Bruce to breed up Megan. I knew it. I called it two hours ago. Well, since I didn't already called the movie, that was the shit. And I'm going to see you soon for something. How did I feel about it? It was cute. It was a great way to spend two hours on a Saturday. I was able to get a little nap in during it. Um, Yeah. Yeah, she was all right. She was all right. I am looking forward to the sequel. They could do a little more, but it was quick. It was simple. It was to the point. Movies don't need to be longer than 90 minutes, and that's what they gave. 90 minutes. Get me in. Get me out. Out. Girl, then she come back to life. They got to stab her with a screwdriver. I mean, typical, but cute. Cute. It's a best fiends of a movie. 